morning, afternoon, evening, night, middle of the night, whatever it is for you, whenever you're listening to this, however you're listening to this, good, whatever it is, I thank you all for joining me as always. I am Michael. I am one of your hosts for today's episode and for all of them, as a matter of fact. But let me just jump into what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about Dwayne Haskins. And for those that don't know who he is, he played football at the Ohio State University in college, and then he went on to play professionally for the Washington football team, now the Commanders, and for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And a few weeks ago, he was killed while trying to cross the interstate. Um, He was actually walking across the interstate on foot. Yeah, that's how you would usually walk. Um, But yeah, he was walking across the interstate after he ran out of gas. He ran out of gas, pulled over to the shoulder, and was walking across the interstate and got hit by a dump truck of all things. So yeah, that left a mark. Um, He was only 24 years old. Now, Haskins' wife planned for the funeral to be in Pittsburgh and Haskins' parents chose not to attend said funeral. And they released a statement that said, um, quote, We have never met nor spoken to the wife, and we didn't want our son's funeral service to be the first place we met her for the first time, end quote. So doesn't really take a genius on this one to figure out that the parents didn't really approve of their marriage. The fact that the statement referred to her as, quote, the wife pretty much says it all. It reminds me like of, um, of... the late Kobe Bryant. I don't think I have to explain to people who Kobe Bryant is. He's a famous basketball player, was a famous basketball player who's no longer with us. And he was estranged from his parents for a long time because they didn't approve of his wife, the woman that he got married to, um, Vanessa, who is now his widow. And it's interesting. The reason I bring all of this up is because it started me thinking about the importance of getting your parents' approval Um, when choosing a life journey with someone. And it's interesting because on dating sites, I often see profiles where women speak to wanting someone that has a good relationship with their mother in particular. And I always found this to be kind of strange because I've encountered many men that place their mothers on pedestals, but treated women in general like shit. It's the weirdest thing. That was just a side note. So it's just interesting that Women are saying you have to have a good relationship with your mother as if that really means a whole lot when ultimately it doesn't because they don't really see their mothers in the same way that they see women in general. It's almost like their mother is like an alien or something, but not like a woman. So they can treat women like shit. Anyway, yeah, it's just the weirdest thing that that that's a requirement that some women might have. And But I've also known women who told me that they wouldn't marry someone that their mother didn't approve of. So so they want the guy to have a good relationship with their mother and their mother has to approve of the guy that they're with. Yeah, and and some of those women, some of those same women, they proclaim um, a man to be weak if he dumped them because his mother didn't approve. So her mother has to approve of him but if his mother doesn't approve of her and he bails out because of that he's a mama's boy and weak there's a whole lot of contradictory stuff going on here and those are kind of like asides but it's just it's just interesting it's just interesting in general but going back to the whole thing about um the parents not getting along with the wife of Dwayne and just these estranged relationships in general because obviously the opinions of not just your parents but friends and other family members they should weigh in your relationship decisions but the question that I think many of us wrestle with is how much should their opinions weigh um, on those decisions because we've all we've all either been in situations or know of situations where everyone was screaming run from this dude or run from this chick but everyone but everyone everyone's everyone's saying that 
it had the opposite effect and seemingly kind of pushed them to that person. And unlike Kobe and, and his wife, most marriages don't that don't have parental or friend approval for that matter, they don't usually end well. And I wonder with all they went through in their marriage, if if that one would have ended well, if it wasn't money involved. And I'm talking about Kobe and Vanessa. So it's like, if Kobe weren't a basketball player that was making tons of money, it makes you wonder if his marriage with Vanessa would have worked, if it would have continued under the weight of all of that pressure from the parents and all of that stuff. But with that said, this isn't about Kobe and Vanessa's marriage. I'll let that man rest, continue to rest in peace. The point is that those relationships without parental or friend approval don't usually last. That's the point I was trying to make. And it's partially because they have to deal with the way to having people in their lives that don't approve of the relationship um, that consumes such a big part of their lives. Because if family and friends don't approve of the person that you're with, they aren't usually shy about hiding it. And while people can say that they don't care about what others think, we all do. Yeah, you're just fronting and stuff like that. You care. We just don't want to admit it for whatever reason. Probably some kind of twisted sense of pride that won't allow us to admit the truth, even though it's obvious that we are affected by those types of things. Anyway, I can't, I can't say that my mother didn't approve of everyone that I dated. Well, I can't say that my mother approved of everyone that I dated. Actually, my mother didn't approve of anyone in the, um, that she met that I dated, as a matter of fact. And well, I think that's just how she is. What can I say? I'm not still with any of them. So maybe she, her, she was right in her disapproval. Or maybe it was just like the cycle of how relationships go. Who knows? But I don't think, I don't think that had to do with I don't think that had to do with any kind of pressure that came from balancing my relationship with moms, though, and the women that I was dating at the time. But you never know. Again, maybe I should go back and rethink those relationships. Or maybe not. Probably not. Definitely not. <laughs> anyway, I've also had friends that were in relationships that I didn't approve of. Well, in my case, see, and see, that's the thing. I shouldn't use the word, quote unquote, approve. Because using the word approve makes it seems like my approval is required or something. I think that's the way a lot of people act. Like, why else would you be so upset about the person that your people choose to date? Like, why are you so mad that your, that your friends choose to date that person? You know, because people act, people act like they're in a relationship sometimes. <laughs> they're so upset about who, who their people date. <clears throat> Excuse me yeah yeah anyway i've told friends that i didn't not approve but i told them that i thought that they were making a bad decision uh, and that was by choosing the man or woman that they were choosing and i've had it happen to both genders while i've had this conversation with um friends of mine but the thing with me is that after i get my opinion on it and my friends choose to continue with that person then it's my job from there to do my part to try to make the relationship work between the two of them. As long as the person that they're dating is cool to me, I've always been more than cool with them. Yeah, so unlike a lot of people, because some people, if they don't like or approve of the person that you're with, boy, whether it's conscious or subconscious, they are going to do their part in trying to sabotage that relationship. Like I said, it might not be a conscious active, I'm going to in, destroy this relationship, but just subconsciously and how they act and how they move around the person and stuff like that. It adds to the weight that I was talking about earlier that's on, on somebody that can lead to fracturing the relationship and ending the relationship. On top of having to like make the relationship work, you got to deal with all these people that don't like them and stuff like that. And it has an impact. So whether your friends are consciously trying to sabotage or not they're trying to sabotage and i'm not that way i actively try to make these things work and so and that's even to the point where i've defended the very woman or very man <clears throat> the very woman or very man that that i didn't think that the person should have been with I've had friends tell me about issues that they were having with the women and men. And, and 
excuse me, and I've told those friends that they were wrong when they were telling me about the issues in that particular instance. And it's funny because some have said to me, you don't even like him or her and you're taking his or her side. But that's how I am. And really, that's how everybody should be. Your job is, is to support your friends and family's choices even if you don't agree with them. And I have disagreed with many, as I'm sure my family and friends have disagreed with many of mine. Like I already told you about moms who didn't agree with any of them. You know, it is what it is. But ultimately, you got to support the decision because we're all adults. And, you know, as adults, you give them feedback and then you have to just let them go and live their lives and find out what they're going to find out. Now, with all of that said, that unconditional su support does come with some exceptions. So I guess it isn't unconditional if there are exceptions. Well, that support comes with some exceptions. Anyway, as I stated earlier, if their person, the person that they're dating is disrespectful to you, especially if you're welcoming to them, then it'll be hard to support that relationship. Now, if you're acting like a jerk toward them, then they're well within their right to defend themselves. So you can't be like, they treated me like shit, but you like started off by treating them like shit. But if you're open to them and they, they're acting all whatever, then it's hard for you to support that because what does that say about the bigger picture if she or he, they're bringing, they're bringing you around will bring in their person that they're dating around to the group of people that he should know or she should know is important to you. And they're not trying to be inclusive. This sends off a bad sign and it's hard to support something when somebody's treating you a certain way in particular. So that's it. Another exception would be if the relationship impacts you in some kind of way. And I've had many people who are in relationships uh, with people that I didn't necessarily not approve, but agree that they should be in relationships with. And while, like I said, most of the time, my job is to support the relationship, but eventually, if it starts to impact me in some kind of way, then it's a problem. If that friend or family member or whoever is complaining all of the time to you about their relationship, that's a problem because anybody trying to hear that mess every day, sheesh, that mess gets annoying. But the other thing is if their relationship is costing you money in some kind of way, that's a problem. And I have actually had friends in the past who have needed to borrow money from me to support their relationships in some kind of way. And it's just like, nah, I'm not doing that. That's a problem. And I don't know which one is worse, to complaining all the time or having to come out of pocket to help somebody out because they're per that person that they're in a relationship with can't hold their own or whatever. But, but I have a rule with everyone and people that know me, they know this. My people can always talk to me about a problem that they're having, but the more repetitive that it gets that they're complaining about stuff, the more that I start to find it funny. I'm weird in that way because eventually it's just like, why, why are you still here? And if I can't make jokes about it, then we can't talk about it. If I make a joke, if you complaining to me every day about something and I start to make jokes about it and then you get, get offended and stuff like that, that should tell you right there. You shouldn't be talking to me about it in the first place, especially not over and over and over and over and over again. It's, I am amazed at how many conversations I would have with people where it's like everything is about the boyfriend or girlfriend. It's like, but then when you ask them why they're still with them or you make the suggestion that maybe you shouldn't be together, then they get all defensive and stuff and start defending the relationship. Well, if you're defending the relationship that hard, maybe you shouldn't be complaining. And then that leads to me just making jokes about it and stuff like that. And then some of them take it in stride, some of them get, get offended. But for me, strangely, the majority of my friends in my circle, they get it and we all like the jokes. So yeah, as long as I don't have to be like, Oh, that's a shame. I feel so bad for you. Yeah, 
as long as I don't have to do that, yeah, I'll listen to you vent as long as I can like slide a joke in every now and then about how funny the stupid shit is that you're going through. Not going through, but you're actually bringing on yourself by continuing in it. I'll listen. Yeah, but like I said, that's how me and my people are. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, because let's face it, honestly, if you stand with someone that you're constantly complaining about, you don't need to be with that person. And you know it. Everybody knows it. That's like dating one on one. But I will admit, though, sometimes it's harder to, to see the things that we all know when we're in the midst of it. And like I've said in previous podcasts, I think a lot of that's because of loneliness. Loneliness is a bitch or the fear of loneliness is a bigger bitch. Yeah. Yeah. But it just makes you wonder why are we spending so much time talking about stuff that we already know the solutions to? So that's that. So to close on this, there needs to be a balance regarding the input of your friends and family. And people shouldn't dismiss their friends and family um, completely in their opinions about the person that you're dating in favor of those shiny objects of that man or that woman that you're dating. Just like, I know that she's fine and I know that he might be sexy. I know that he might appear to have a lot of money and I know that she might, be fine because that's pretty much all the guys hang their hats on but hey sometimes that's not enough and it's definitely not worth the aggravation that a lot of people will put you through but that's life as Pootie Tang says Sarate. but but also in that in finding that balance between the parents and friends and their input you also have to acknowledge the motives of your family and friends, at least some of them that are giving you advice. Some are just plain haters <laughs> that, are, that are scarred from their own past relationships. And the thing about it is, what's funny is when somebody is in a relationship and their people are telling them that dude or woman isn't for you, the natural inclination is to brand them as a hater and ignore them but no you have to look at it objectively and look at their relationship with them and make the determination as to where their opinion is coming from and what's funny about it is I've been in situations where people have said I don't like that guy or I don't like that woman for you and the person didn't even ask why do you feel that way is interesting. And if there is ever an indicator that they don't want to hear it, that's it right there. When it's like your people that you trust are telling you, I don't like that guy for you, or I don't like that woman for you. And you don't even ask why, but they could be haters or not, or they just could be giving you sage advice that needs to at least be factored into making your decision. Nobody should take somebody's opinion a hundred percent but it should be part of an accumulation of factors that leads you to a decision. And, you know, we're all prisoners of the moment where the way the relationship is going at that particular time is what we're using to determine whether we should be in it or not. You two just have a fight. The first thing you go to is I need to break up. And all these people were telling me that he wasn't shit or she wasn't shit anyway, or, Things are going great. We had a fight two weeks ago, but the last week and a half have been great. And so all of these people, they just on some BS and we should be together forever. Yeah, so don't be prisoners of the moment. Take the full scope of the relationship and go from there. But that's enough of me lecturing. I'm done with that. Yeah, but it's just interesting in Dwayne Haskins um, situation. And it's so sad because the parents are obviously grieving the loss of their son. The wife is obviously grieving the loss of their of her husband, and they have to deal with not only that, but this extra weight of this disconnect that they have because the parents didn't approve. Now, it's not to say that the wife was some gold digger or something like that, and it's not to say that the parents are just haters or anything like that. We don't know because we don't know them. It's just sad, though, that this is just one other thing that the parents of a slain child or the husband, um, the wife of a slain husband have to deal with on top of just putting their son and or wife and or husband in the ground. 
it's just a lot. And I just don't really know where that balance is from like, my parents don't approve, but what do I do with that? This sucks, but yeah, rest in peace, rest in power, rest in wherever, to whatever the slang is that people use these days. Anyway, let me end this on a note like I always, well, not always, but usually in these episodes, by talking about death and divorce. So I think I covered death with Dwayne Haskins. So we'll just sit that to the side. And <clears throat> so we'll focus on the divorce part. For people that listen to this podcast, you know, that's usually how these things end. But when I'm talking about divorce in this case, it's not just any divorce. <clears throat> well, like I always say, I don't just focus on divorce when I'm talking about divorces. It's usually divorces that from couples that have been married for a long time and I think a couple episodes ago maybe the last episode it was all about divorces just to catch up and today I have another one today's topic is Dan Aykroyd for those that don't know he was on Saturday Night Live I think it was I think he was on the original Saturday Night Live like that long ago um, people that this dem- that this podcast caters to will probably remember that he was also in the Blues Brothers movies um, the first one the first one is the only one that really mattered. The other ones that came after were just stupid. But the first one is one of my all-time favorite movies. I love that movie. But he was in other stuff. He was a he was a famous actor. Anyway, Dan Aykroyd, he's 69 years old. And he is separating from his wife after 39 years of marriage. Now, the separating part is the part that makes this interesting and kind of nuanced from the divorces that I usually talk about because he says that he and his wife aren't going to legally divorce. They're just not going to be a couple anymore. They're just going to go their separate ways and not live as married without going through the process of getting divorced. And like I said, Dan Aykroyd is 69 years old and his wife is 64. And if we factor out cheating that probably went on, who's to say right or wrong, they've been in each other, they've been each other's primary partner for over 40 years when you factor in the dating period before marriage. So what, what, what in the world are they going to do? You know, are, are they going to go to the clubs to try to meet another young tenderoni? And I don't mean to speak disrespectfully or anything like that, but Dan isn't looking all that spry these days. He's looking closer to death than life. But with that said, I guess if his money is long enough, I guess he can pay another woman to quote unquote love him. But sheesh, man, as I always say, though, and I'll say it again, at this age, well, not this age, but at that age, because I'm not close to 69, at that age, yeah. And after being with the same person for that long, what issue in the world is there that you that you can't work through? But there obviously is an issue, if not multiple issues that I guess that I guess have built up over time. And it's just so odd to me that that I don't know. It's just odd to me. That's not how I thought marriage was supposed to work. I thought that you were supposed to work through these things. And I thought the longer that you were together, the more that these things would smooth out, not to say that they would just get easy and you would never have any issues, but I thought that you would just have your tools sharpened up well enough that the issues wouldn't be big enough to like bring down a marriage of 39 years. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And as far as the whole thing about staying married but not wanting to be together, I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. I guess it. I guess though, it's sixty nine years old and sixty four years old respectively. I guess they just figure it's not even worth the effort. It's like I don't want to be with you. You can keep my last name, but we just gonna go our separate ways and stuff like that. And that's just it. But it's funny though, as I'm thinking about it, because I know quite a few people though who have gotten married and then broken up from their significant their spouses and still and never got divorced I seems like it used to be a common thing I don't know if common is the right word but it used to be something where I knew a lot of people where I would meet women um, in particular 
in dating them that would tell me that they were still legally married and then you have to start the process of getting divorced because it's like I'm not going to continue with this if you're still married I don't care if y'all been together or not haven't been together or not it's like that's just weird you have to start that process and untangling all of that stuff and it seems like the kind of thing that if you're looking to date someone you would start that process before looking to date someone and not after you find someone because I don't want to sit around while you go through that process of untangling things from this dude or whatever or anyway it's just weird I don't understand it um rest in peace Dwayne Haskins it's sad that the parents and the wife can't get together on this is yeah yeah if any if any time there's a time to bury this hatchet is is now yeah but i'm guessing that is not because then we have to go through the whole process of what to do with his the money that he made he wasn't a super rich guy but he i'm imagining that he didn't have a will and that would probably mean that the wife is getting everything and that'll probably lead to a whole another set of drama so i'm guessing that this won't be something that's resolved easily anyway life man reggie what do you think about all of this reggie say what's up to the people well reggie didn't say anything so oh well reggie's being reggie which is not an uncommon phrase so i'm out of here thank you all have a good whatever day it is that you're watching listening to this and yeah goodbye